backbench motion on space policy to move the motion I call Dr Philippa Whitford. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I beg to move the motion on space policy in my name and the name of other cross-party members, um, as written in the order paper. Now, the motion, if you read it, if, sorry, if honourable members read it, they will see that it covers an incredible breadth and depth of this industry and its amazing potential. And I hope over the debate that that will actually be covered by people from different parts of the United Kingdom. Some people, I have to say, are likely to stoop to using some fairly poor puns. And I would like to register at this point, I accept no responsibility. I lay the blame at the feet of the Prime Minister, who has stooped to using some pretty shocking puns in recent question times, for which he needs to be penitent. Yeah. Now, some people who follow the media will be aware that um, our former First Minister, the Right Honourable Member for Gordon, has used as a travelling pseudonym the name of that famous captain of the SS Enterprise. But for a debate as important as this, I felt that we should actually contact the real McCoy. And I therefore have a message to the House of Commons from William Shatner. Here, here. Space is one of the last known frontiers mostly untouched by mankind in his politics. In opening a debate on this subject, it is my hope that you take the tenets of Star Trek's prime directive to universally and peacefully share in the exploration of it. I wish you all a wonderful debate. My best, Bill. We also have had, as some people will have seen on uh, Twitter, a message from George Tukai, otherwise known as Mr Sulu. Uh, wishing us luck as we venture to the stars. Now, this debate is not a debate about fictional astronauts. We tried to get the debate on this day to <laughs> honour a real astronaut, Major Tim Peake, who is currently in the International Space Station, and we sought it today because tomorrow he will be making a spacewalk. Now, contrary to some slightly sloppy journalism, he is not actually the first British astronaut. That honour happened a quarter of a century ago and was Dr. Helen Sharman yeah, from yeah, Yorkshire yeah. in 1991. And I find it incredibly appropriate that prior to that, she was a research chemist for Mars. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get worse. <laughs> but what Major Tim Peake is, is our first astronaut through an increased engagement with the European Space Agency. And while Helen Sharman was on the Mir station, he is in the International Space Station. He certainly, tomorrow, will take part in the very first British spacewalk. Now, this will start, hopefully, at 11.30 tomorrow morning, GMT, and I would encourage <coughs> all schools and children, youngsters of all ages, to log in to Principia.org or NASA TV on the internet, where this will be shown, as it truly is a historic moment. Yeah. Now, what he has been tasked to do is to change regulators on the solar panels. And as these are high-voltage regulators, uh, this walk actually has to be entirely carried out on the dark side. Now, I'm a member of the Parliamentary, <laughs> I'm a member of the Parliamentary Space Committee. And we had the great opportunity to have a private tour of the Cosmonauts exhibition in the Science Museum. And I would recommend it to anyone. They spent four years negotiating with Russia to bring incredible artefacts to this country. The space capsule of Tereshkova, uniforms of Gagarin, and all sorts of pieces of real hardware that even people in Russia didn't know existed. And a thing that struck me as we went round the museum was the fact that during points of incredible friction between Russia and the US and across the world, back channels always remained open, cooperation always continued on the International Space Station. Yeah, yeah. And we've seen that in these few years of setting up this exhibition when we have had the Ukrainian crisis, Crimea and friction over Syria. If we can work so well together in space, it would be great if we could work a little bit better here on Earth. Here, here, here. Now, any members who were in this chamber when I made my maiden speech will remember that I referred to Prestwick 
as being in my constituency and being on the shortlist for consideration as a spaceport. And I remember during the election, whenever I talked to anyone about this, they'd always just laugh. Because to us in this country, we think space is for other people. It's for the big boys, North America, Russia, maybe even China, but not us. And that's something we have to change. We need to believe what we can do. And I think Major Tim Peake's mission will achieve that. We see interest of school children. The Science Museum was packed on the day of the launch. We had members in this place watching it live on screen. And we hope that that's going to lead to an interest in STEM subjects and an absolute belief in the space industry here in the United Kingdom. The space industry is new, but the UK has a proud aviation history. Rolls-Royce, supersonic flight. We need to take that to the next step and we need to grasp that opportunity. Now that industry has changed over the last five years and I applaud decisions that were taken in 2010 that led to the formation of the UK Space Agency. It is now an industry with a turnover of 11.5 billion. It employs 35,000 people. Three quarters of them are graduate jobs and a third of their production is exports. But the vision of the Department of Business is that this should grow to be a £40 billion industry. And for that, we really need to take action. Now, I think that if it wasn't a political decision, there should be not really any great doubt that it would be Prestwick. We actually already have almost everything that is needed. We have a runway that's touching three kilometres. We're in a coastal position to allow start off over the sea. We actually have the Northern Air Traffic Control Centre in our campus, which allows the planning of what's going to be some pretty clever management of airspace. And obviously we have relatively empty airspace. We are close to Glasgow University and Strathclyde, technology catapults, and we uniquely have an aerospace cluster on the airport campus. This contains BAE systems, Spirit Aerosystems, and many others, all of whom are really interested in the idea of a spaceport. And up the road from us is Clyde Space, who make small CubeSats that are only a litre in size. Now, early communication satellites were weighed in tonnes and were the size of a double-decker bus. But the UK, through Surrey satellites, has led since the 80s in produ producing ones that are about the size of a fridge. That is a, a step change. And it has been shown that if the cost of getting a satellite into space gets down to being in the tens of thousands, everyone's going to want one. And we will have to look at regulation of that, or space will just be full of junk. Yeah, but it yeah. does enable all sorts of possibilities. But we do not have a domestic launch site. And that's why the aim is to have a UK spaceport by 2018. Now, as well as all of the physical attributes of Prestwick, despite preconceptions, 20 years of Met Office data shows that Prestwick has the clearest weather. Compared with Newquay, which people would presume is the closest contender, low cloud is suffered by Newquay 31% of the time and only 11% at Prestwick. Less than five kilometre visibility is suffered by Newquay 15% of the time and only 4% at Prestwick. I live in Troon, which is next door, and I can vouch that we have a weird little weather system locally known as the Prestwick Hole. You fly into it, you drive into it, you walk into it, you can be surrounded by thick cloud, and you will look up and see a large hole of pure blue sky. And this is what has made Prestwick the clear weather airport for the United Kingdom for decades. So I would call on the Minister not just to look at having one spaceport. I think this is an industry that is going to mushroom. I think we need to accept there will be all sorts of sectors that will develop that we haven't even thought about. I think it will diversify. This is a real industry, not the beam me up Scotty or fretting about the dilithium crystals that we see on the telly, but a multi-billion pound industry. So I would call 
on the Minister to be imaginative and to be brave and to be boldly going where no minister has gone before. Oh, yeah. 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 Nearly done. Oh. Nearly done. Oh, I'm sure you're going to have about an hour, two hours. Of I would just like to say in closing, Prestwick was Scotland's first ever passenger airport. And it was actually founded by Group Captain David McIntyre, the first man to fly over Everest. This is the kind of imagination and drive that we need. So I call on the minister to please be imaginative, enable this industry across the entire UK so that it can live long and prosper. Oh, yeah. Yeah.